All right, anyone got a favourite that they want to finish off? A favourite? Go, Jack. You've got to be able to read people's minds. You've got to be able to. You've got, you've, you've got to be able to interpret the gobbledygook. <laughs> it's like going back to when your kids were little or grandkids. Oh, oh yeah, that's really good. <laughs> I love you, brother. All right, 411. Let's sing the uh, the first. We'll just sing the first and the last of this one too. Ready? One, two, three. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Good singing. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 1 this morning. Matthew chapter 1. You know, the great thing about uh, these passages in Matthew 1, Matthew, uh, you know, Matthew 1 and 2, Luke chapters 1 and 2, uh, prophecy being fulfilled, um, doctrine just oozing out of it. Uh, for example, you know, we think about the, th- this is what we call the incarnation, uh, where God became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, What a blessing that is. Isn't it a blessing to know that God loved humanity so much, despite its depravity, despite its wickedness, that he he loved it so much that he came to this earth, you know, and, 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 and in the form of Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? So to die on the cross for us, and that's such a blessing when we think about that. So we want to look at this passage that Cameron read for us, but not just look at it from a the birth of a baby point of view, not even so much to look at it through a through doctrinal perspective, but we want to find out what, what can we take from this and, and apply it to our life. And I think that's important for us because there's so many things that we can get out of this passage of Scripture for ourselves that, it, that it's just a, it's a wonderful thing. But let me just start this way. Has any of you ever in your life jumped to a conclusion? <laughs> Yeah, first prize. Oh, two hands, two hands. Uh, most of us have jumped to a conclusion. Most of us have even been rash in making a decision. We've not got all the facts. <laughs> Everyone's nudging like, well, this, this message's for you. Uh, we've, all, we've all been there. We've all done that. Everyone's been rash in making a decision. Everyone's jumped to a conclusion. Why do we do that? Well, it's because we hear something or say, or we hear something said, or we see something being done, we don't have all the facts in regards to what's taking place that we jump to a conclusion. It's a very dangerous thing, isn't it, to do that, especially in, in Christianity. If you think about what's taking place in the life of Mary and Joseph, because I love to read the Bible and actually try and put myself in the shoes of the people that I'm reading about. Um, I've, I've watched on Facebook a lot lately about there was no room for them in the inn and so on and so forth and make sure you've got room for Jesus and that's, that's wonderful, that's good. But you know why there was no room in the inn? It wasn't because they didn't love Jesus or anything like that. There was no room in the inn because the, the place was just chock-a-block. It was at a time of the year where everyone's coming to be taxed, everyone's probably booked right up and then Mary and Joseph get there and there was just no room so they went to the stable. Now prophesied, yes, but that was why there was no room. It was just so busy uh, in life. And that in, that in and of itself is a great application. Never get so busy in life that you don't have room for Jesus. 
And we can all get like that, regardless of being saved or unsaved. Even Christians can get so busy this time of the year, driving out. I don't know, like yesterday, I, the, I was asked, did you want to come? Mum and, and everyone, did they gone out shopping? I'm like, no. I'm not going to Kiwana. I'm not going to Caloundra. I'm not going up to the plaza. If you, anyone go to Chermside yesterday? Oh, how did you navigate that? I mean, isn't it? It's just so busy, the mass of humanity. And you're contributing to it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we all contribute to the mass of humanity. We're so busy getting things and presents that sometimes we do have no room for Jesus. But if you think about what's taking place here in Matthew, and let's, let's remind ourselves again, verse 18. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now, folks, let me tell you, we, never, we, may, we might not have had the Christmas that we know if it hadn't been for God stepping in. Because think about the emotion at the moment. Joseph is espoused to Mary a virgin. And then it says she's found with child. In other words, she couldn't hide it any longer. The baby bump was there. So here's, here's Joseph, the emotion of what's taking place. Hopes and dreams may be dashed. Plans have gone out the window because here is my, my espoused, here's my, we would call her a fiancé, and now all of a sudden you are showing What's going on? And so I try and put myself in his, his shoes here to think, what, how would I respond? How would I, how would I look at this as an individual if, if my espoused bride was found with a child? My fiancé has cheated on me. That would be something that he might have thought. My fiancé's cheated on me. How could this happen? What's taking place here? And then as, as it goes on, his intentions towards this. Verse 19, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example. Do you know what that means, to make her a public example? Shame. Would have shamed her. But do you know under the law it would have regarded stoning? Yeah. Now think about that. Joseph had every right, according to the law, to make her a public example. Aren't you glad he didn't jump to a conclusion? Aren't you glad he didn't make a rash decision? My goodness, what's going on? I want to make, but this is what he says. He says, I'm, I was minded to put her away privily. And that, that, now, that's talking about divorce because to be espoused is an actual legal contract. Uh, it's almost like being married. It's, it's illegal. Today, we don't, uh, you know, Australia, we're engaged, you get a ring, but there's no legalities to it. There's no binding contract. Here, it's different. So he was minded to not make her a public example, but to put her away privately, to divorce her privately. That, that was what his plan was. Breach of promise. Hey? Breach of promise. I don't understand. Breach of promise. Yeah, exactly. A breach of promise. All right. So here, here we've got Joseph. And he's going through all this stuff. I mean, he's, he's thinking all along these lines. And it says in verse 20, and here's the, the thought for this morning. It says, but while he thought on these things. While he thought on these things. So he was sitting down, I would say, or he could have been going for a walk. You know what I would be doing? I probably couldn't sit. I'd, I'd have to be pacing. Because as I said, you know, you think about Joseph and it's like my intended. She's been found with child. She's, how could this happen? Was she raped? Was she, willing, was she a willing party in this? What, what's taken place? And he's, he's thinking on all these things. Just, what am I going to do? And I had such high hopes. Now they've dashed. It's like, I don't even know what I'm going to do now. But you know, it's a benefit just to stop and think about these things because he didn't make a rash decision. He didn't jump to a conclusion. He may have been thinking some things, which is well within his rights to do that. But he didn't jump to a conclusion. He just didn't fly off the handle. But it was during this time, and I'll get to that in a minute, but let me just think about this, this thought for a minute. It's important that we learn to think on things. 
to think about what's being said, to think about what's being done. Most of us do it every day when we watch the news. We, we look at what's taking place in the world and we think about what's taking place. And most, more often than not, we think about what's taking place today in light of the future. We, 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 we're looking forward to our Saviour's return. So we look at today's, what's going on today. We think about what we're seeing and we might look at the scriptures and we think about the return of Christ, all these number of different things. But it's very important that we don't jump to a conclusion. It's very important that we don't get rash with our decisions as many hands put up. We've all been there and done that and nothing good comes from jumping to a conclusion. So we thought on these things. I'm going to come back to Matthew for a minute, but I want to go to Philippians chapter 4 because to stop and think about things is something that's very important in life. And we learn this from, from Joseph. But in Philippians chapter 4, we, we read something here that's important for us to consider. It says this in verse number 6, Be careful for nothing. Now we know what that phrase means, doesn't it? It says, don't, don't worry, don't have anxiety, don't be full of cares. That's easy, isn't it? <laughs> That's not easy. It's not easy. So, but it's here. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So that's the answer, as a matter of fact. If you're struggling with cares, if you're struggling, and a lot of people this time of the year do, don't they? For a lot of people, this time of the year is exciting. Families get together. This is so good. But do you know for a lot of people, this time of the year is a huge struggle? There's a lot of people out there that are just full of care. Uh, maybe mums and dads worrying about how am I going to get enough money together to get my children presents? And isn't it such a blessing that in Australia around this time of the year we get our electric bills, we get our phone bills, we get our... Everything else comes at this time of the year. So with the added worry of buying stuff for my family I've got bills to pay I've got this I've got that this is not a wonderful time of the year for everybody but here's the answer in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus and then he says this finally brethren whatsoever things are true Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. So Joseph, while he thought on these things, while he was thinking about what in the world was taking place with his intended wife, his wife is... She's called Mary. He's thinking about what, what's, what's taking place here. And it's important for us to stop and think about life, to think about what we're going through so that we can hear from God. And I say that because that's exactly what happened to Joseph. But before I get there, go with me to Psalm 39. Psalm 39. Because when you stop to think about some things, this is good English, Things happen. When you stop to think about things, things happen. Aren't you glad about that? So in Psalm 39, and this is where we all get into trouble, when we don't sit and think about things long. Now, I know that there's a balance to that because people can procrastinate. So there is a procrastination to it. But I'm talking about if you stop and think about something and when you hear from God, you act. Does someone want to turn that? Is that air con too cold? Do you want to turn the air con someone, someone, Robbie, would you be able to just turn the air con off, please? Thank you. Just that one over there. We want to make our visitors feel comfortable. <laughs> Let's have a look at Psalm 39 for a moment. Look at Psalm 39 and, and look at verse number, um, look at verse 3. It says, My heart was hot within me while I was musing. The fire burned, then spake I with my tongue. While I was musing. That's an interesting word. Basically, what he's saying is while I was meditating on these things, while I was thinking about this, the fire burned. You know, if you and I as Christians would take the time out 
and sit and think about something and meditate on it. And the Bible's full of what we should meditate. We meditate on whatsoever is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of a good report. We think about the works of God. We think about everything dealing with God. If we would just take the time out and stop and think about life, think about what's going on, thinking about the situation, which is what Joseph's stopping and thinking about, his situation that he's in, he's thinking about all these things. But I tell you what happened when he was thinking about these things. God spoke to him. God spoke to him. And God said something of great importance back in Matthew chapter 1. He says this in verse number 20. It says, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not. Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. I want to say something before I talk about this thing of fear, but I want you to notice this in Matthew chapter 1 is what we call the royal lineage of Jesus Christ. If you look at Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1, it says the book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David. David was a king. So what we read about this is we read about our Lord's lineage. We think about that his lineage is a royal lineage. But if you were to read through this, and I was going to preach on on this lineage um, this morning, but I'd I was led elsewhere, but I do want to say this though. Do you know, in the lineage of Jesus Christ, not everyone in that lineage was perfect. (laughs) You know, you've got Christmas coming and you're going to have family come together. Do you know that in your family you've got some weird uncles? And maybe even weirder, yeah, aunties and cousins. And maybe you might even have someone that you just hope that they're not coming. (laughs) Come on, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Because you know that if that cousin comes, he can't keep his mouth shut. He's going to start something and it's just going to be a big kerfuffle. But you know what? Joseph was a part of this royal lineage. If you look at verse number 20, he says, Joseph, thou son of David. Listen, Mary, Mary was going to marry well, if you think about it. Because here we've got Joseph, just like Jesus, Jesus the son of David. We've got now Joseph the son of David. Joseph is in this royal lineage. But if you look at it, we've got people like Tamar, verse number three. You remember Tamar, don't you, who faked herself a prostitute? Right? And then we've got verse number five, Rahab. Rahab the harlot. Then we've got Ruth, who was a Moabitess. Oh, and let's talk about David for a moment, because though we think of him as a great king, he was a murderer. He was an adulterer. He was a schemer. It's going well. And if you notice something, which is always going to be, because this word is eternal. Look at verse 6. And Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon, of her that had been the wife of Urias. He was never going to forget this. He was never going to let, let live her down. Always reminded that Bathsheba was the wife of Uriah. You remember Uriah, don't you? The one that he schemed against because he saw Bathsheba and loved what he saw and and, uh, had relations with her and she got pregnant and then it all started. Now, how am I going to deal with this? I know what I'm going to do. I'll put him at the forefront of the battle and and he'll die at the battle. But he got him to come home first and wanted him to get drunk and all all this stuff that David tried to fix his problem, right? And we know the story, we know the account. But the thought is this, is that when you read through this lineage, it's filled with people who are not perfect. And that's good for us because we're in this because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. Aren't you glad you don't have to be perfect to be in the lineage or in the family of God? You don't have to be perfect. None of us are perfect enough. And that's why Jesus died so that through his perfection, we get accepted into the family of God. But he says this, he says, while he thought on these things, verse number 20 God speaks to him and says, fear not. Why fear not? Well, there's the fear of uncertainty. I would say that Joseph was a bit uncertain about his future. Have you ever been uncertain about your future? Ever got to a point in life where you had it all planned out? You had it all mapped out and, uh, you know... It's not bad. It's not a bad thing to have a plan. It's not a bad thing to have things worked out. I've, I've got a. Uh, I, I went to Office Works and I got one of those big um, work desk calendar things, big month, and and I like to sit down and I'll fill in what to do, and we're going to do this and we're going to do that, and different days and and all. And it's good to have a plan. But I always say this: your plans should be flexible. 
Though we pray about the future, though it's good to put plans in place and so on and so forth, we know that according even just to this scripture that what Joseph had planned out, God had a different idea, didn't he? All right, Joseph, I know what your plans are, but I'm going to throw a spanner in the works. And it was a big one. The fear of uncertainty. He says, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. I want, to, uh, I want to submit something here. I don't think that the folks in this day really had an understanding of who or what the Holy Ghost was all about. And I'm going to say, it, I'm going to say that even in our day, I don't think we have a full grasp of who the Holy Spirit is all about. And believe me, I have tried to hear so many different people explain the Godhead and God this and Jesus and God the Father and God the Son and the Holy Ghost and all this sort of stuff going on. It, it's, it's just... It's out there, but hey, our finite minds struggle to comprehend a finite God, an infinite God. I mean, he's just, he's just too big. So he says, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, of course, he brings forth a son, and he goes on, and I'm so glad that it's Emmanuel God with us. And I was saying to someone you know, earlier on, I think it was to... Uh, uh, I think it was to Ronnie. Was it to you, Ronnie? What I said about humanity, how God, you know, God sees and He just steps in. God comes in, and aren't you glad that God showed up? I mean, if you look at some of the prophecies, we're dealing with people that were sitting in darkness, in the shadow of death, and so on. Though man, man was at, man was at wit's end. This this was not a good time for man, and then God shows up. And most of us can testify in our life the difficulties that we face, but then God shows up. And I'm grateful for that. So we look at all of this and while he thought on these things and while he thought on these things as he, as he contemplated, as he meditated, as he was musing about what's going on, trying to make sense of everything that's taking place and as God speaks to him, he shares some things with him. He, as obviously he tells her that it's of the Holy Ghost. But I want you to notice, and here's a few thoughts I just want to leave you with. Maybe you know, next Sunday is the end of the year, but just want you to think about this as we come to the end of the year, we approach a new year. Everything that Joseph was meditating, thinking about, worried about, God shows up and he explains some things. Now, God doesn't have to explain himself. He chooses to do that. And the first thought that I want to give you is this, is that God will give clarity at the right time. God will give clarity at the right time. So as Joseph is sitting here and meditating and thinking about what's going on, God gives Joseph some clarity. Don't fear, take your wife, that which is conceived of her is the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And maybe even in this last year, you've had times in life where you've just sat down and you thought, I really don't know what's going on. I've just, I'm going through some stuff and I don't know what's taken place. And maybe it's even continuing right now. And maybe, I don't know, maybe it will continue into 2024. But I want to say this, and not just based on this scripture alone, because there's other scriptures where there are people who are really thinking hard about what's going on in life, and God shows up at the right time and he gives clarity about what's happening. That's why it's important not to jump to a conclusion. That's why it's important not to make rash decisions in life, because I don't know about you, when I've ever done that, it's never ended up in a good place. I'm glad God gets me out of a bind, right? He's had to do that plenty. He doesn't have to, but he's done that plenty of times before. But let me just say this. It's better that we don't get into a bind than get into a bind and have to call on the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, he's gracious, he's merciful, and he'll do that. But I like the fact that while he was thinking about this, God gave him clarity. As Joseph's thinking about his future, God says, it's okay. I've got this. This is all according to my will. This is all according to my plan. And that's why I said plans have to be flexible because though we do make plans, God has a way of sort of stepping in and, and interjecting his plans with our plans. So he gives Joseph some clarity. Uh, secondly, I want you to understand something about this is, is this, is that the purpose of God is fulfillment. If you look at verse number 22, it says, All this was done that it might be fulfilled. So we ought to stop for a second and think, you know what, everything that's 
being done or being done in our life is a fulfillment of what God wants for me. Because God has your best interests at heart. You might think you've got your best interest, but God's got your best interest at heart. He knows the trajectory of your life. He knows what's going to happen in 2024. I, listen, you know, this is what's going to happen. I can guarantee you, I, I'll prophesy right now. You ready for it, right? Kenneth Copeland and his crowd at the beginning of 2024 will all give their divine prophecies like they do every year. 2024 is going to be the year of prosperity and whatever. And out they go and they, 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 they fill the airwaves with their false prophecies. Let me tell you, there's only one person who knows what's going to happen in 2024, and it's God. Now, the great thing about that is we, as we finish this year and we, we think about planning about going to a new year, we go into a new... I don't know what's going to happen in 2024, but God does, and that's why I need to walk with him. That's why I don't want to jump to a conclusion. That's why I need to stop and think about some things so it gives God time to speak to me. And by the way, let me just say this. He will speak to you, not just when it's the right time for him, but when you're ready to hear it. Because, you know, there are times in our life where we're just not ready to hear what God's got for us. Well, how can that be? Because we've got plans. We've got desire. Nothing wrong with a plan or a desire. Nothing wrong with that at all. But again, we better make sure that what I want is what God wants. Right? Right? So God knows and he reveals at the right time, but he reveals when you're ready to hear it. You know, there's been times in my life where I've not been ready, ready to hear from God. You know, when we stopped, this is going back some time now, when we stopped going to church for a year, we just stopped. We, we, I got, a, I got a, a bee in my bonnet about stuff. Stop going to church, forget that. You know, God in his graciousness tried communicating with me Throughout the years, sent brothers around, knocking on the door, trying to invite me back to church, trying to, and I didn't want to bar of it, didn't want to know. Why? I wasn't ready to hear it. But do you know, as I've shared before, God brings you to a point in your life where you're ready. Where you're ready. Lord, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Isn't that what Sam, Samuel said? Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So when you think about this, the purpose of God is fulfillment. What's he doing in your, in your life? Well, he's trying to make you like Christ. And sometimes we're a little bit like Gideon. Let's go to Judges chapter 6 for a minute, just quickly. Let's go to Judges chapter 6. Sometimes we're a little bit like Gideon. And if you know anything about the, uh, the story of Gideon, you know that Gideon was threshing wheat to hide it from the Midianites. Because they would come down, steal everything, and then Israel would be impoverished. And they would be scrounging and they would be worrying. And then the angel of the Lord shows up and says to this guy who's afraid and who's hiding uh, the stuff from the Midianites, he says, uh, he says, hey, how you going, thou mighty man of valor? <laughs> are you, who are you talking to? You know what I mean? It's like, surely you've got the wrong person here. But that's such a great, a, a great application there because God sees in you who you really are. God saw Gideon as a mighty man of valor. But it took a little bit of convincing in Gideon's life, just like it takes some convincing in our life when God speaks to us. In verse number 12, Judges 6, 12, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Have you ever asked God that very same question? And maybe, and I'm just saying a maybe here, but because it doesn't say in the scripture, so I'm taking a little bit of license. Possibly, could it be that as Joseph sits there and contemplates and gives some thoughts to some things, he's already thinking in his mind, I'm, go I'm not going to make a public example of it, I'm going to put it away private. Do you think that in his mind he could have said, why has this happened to me? Why did this happen to me? It probably was the first thing that he thought. I know it probably would have been the first thing I would have thought. As a matter of fact, I know it's been the first things that I've thought. When something happens in the family or when, when, when you get a, you know, any kind of disease, and I've shared this before, you know, even years ago when Tracy was first diagnosed with all of this, as much as I tried to understand, there were times where I thought, why is this happening? 
To what purpose and to what end do these things happen? Well, God has a purpose and God has a plan. And so when all these things were done, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, and we'll get into that in a minute. I've been thinking a little bit about Job, not because I'm experienced, no, no way am I experienced anything like Job, but I'm thinking a little bit about Job in light of the book of Revelation, funny enough. And if there is someone in the Bible that could sit and say, why is all this happening to me? Don't you think Job could have been that person? I mean, I, I wouldn't give him a hard time if he, if he asked that question, knowing what Job went through. But everything that happened in Job's life brought Job to a position where he, he yes, he acknowledged God, but the latter end of his life was doubly blessed than the first part of his life. And scholars say that what happened in Job, the time frame was just nine months out of all of his life. Now, that nine months was pretty hectic. But that's why it's important that we, we, we take time while we, we ought to think on these things. And, and as we think on these things, God shows us and, and we, we come to this conclusion because God is speaking to our hearts. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord. So God has a plan and a purpose. And we must always remember the simplicity of it is this, is that he is conforming us to the image of Christ. Because Jesus was the king born with a purpose, and that was to die on Calvary. We love, we love the baby in a manger. What's not to love about a baby? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Poppy, it's your time to change a nappy. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I've had my time, right? Come on, guys. Am I right? <laughs> Jennifer, I changed a lot. When it got down to Robert, it was like, nah, mum's doing it. You know what I mean? And now you're trying to get me to change my grandson's nappy. That's, that's just not happening, right? But I like that when God talks to Joseph and he says, you know, all this is done for a reason. There's a purpose behind this. Aren't you glad that something magnificent came from this emotional event in life? You're going to bring forth the son. His name's going to be called Jesus. He's going to save his people from their sins. Wow. And that's just like God, isn't it? To take a bad situation that we're in and just bring something magnificent out of it. We see that all through the lives of different ones in the scriptures. Now, I want to leave you with this one here, and it's this, is that God is in the details. God is in the details. Have you ever heard it said that the devil's in the details? The devil's not in the details. The devil is a big picture kind of guy, but God is in the details. And, and sometimes in our life, we, we don't see the details. We, we don't see the trees for the forest and so on and so forth, right? Verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That's the incarnation of God. I love that. I just, just to stop and think about that for a moment. You know, do you know the Ark of the Covenant is a picture of the deity and humanity of Jesus Christ? Because the Ark of the Covenant was made up of gopher, is it gopher wood? I think it was wood. It was wood. Gopher wood, I think it was. But it was overlaid with gold. The gold is a picture of divinity. The wood is a picture of humanity. Jesus had dual natures. He never stopped being fully God while he was fully man. And in his humanity, he went through what he went through for us. In his humanity, he subjected himself to the Father. In his humanity, he prayed, not my will, but thy will be done. In his humanity, he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. But he never ceased being God. But I love the fact that God loved the world so much that he decided to show up. Here I am, God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took under him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Oh, that name is above every name. That name is so powerful. That name is so abused. The name Jesus. God is in the details.
God with us. You know, God reveals himself to us at the right time. And I would say that Joseph was, was, I would say he was happy about that. He was a righteous man. He, there's no doubt about it. He, he, he thought about Mary. He, he could have kicked it to the curb. He could have said, you wicked woman, what have you been up to? All this sort of stuff and could have thrown it to the walls. But he said, no. I want to do things on the quiet. I want, to, I want to do right by her. And then God says, here is it. And I'm so glad that God shows up in our life. Now, he's not going to show up physically, if you know what I mean. But we know that he manifests himself in our lives in different ways. And so what the thought this morning is this, is that while he thought on these things, while he thought about what was taking place, God spoke to him and said, you know what, Joseph, it's okay. I've got everything in control. And this morning, Christmas, yeah, tomorrow, Christmas Eve today, New Year's Eve next week, looking for a new year, excited about a new year. Never forget that God is always in control. He knows what's taken place. He knows what's happening. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Lord, we thank you for these accounts in the scriptures that we can learn from, that we can make application in our own life. Lord, tomorrow we are going to celebrate with families the birth of a saviour. And we're going to think about the baby Jesus. We're going to think about salvation. I hope we are. And we're going to think about everything that was wrapped up, if you please, in that one life, your life, Lord. And we're so glad, Lord, that you came. God, we're glad that you manifest yourself. Lord, we're thankful that you know all things. And we're thankful that we're coming to the end of 2023 for some fantastic year for others, maybe not so good. But you know, when we enter into 2024, we do so confidently knowing that you know all things and that our plans should be your plans. So help us with that, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.